Where I come from, the stray cats are millions. No one knows the number, but imagine that in the small village where I am stuck right now due to the lockdown, I've counted about 15, 20 cats in our street alone. So you get the idea. Cats are sort of like urban fauna here, a very overpopulated urban fauna, and TNR is the most ethical solution. So TNR means trap, neuter, return or release. We trap the cats, we spay and neuter them, and the next day we release them back to their natural habitat, their neighborhoods. Their population is kept under control. The less they increase in numbers, the easier they can be fed. The less sick they get from sexually transmitted diseases. The males don't fight, the females don't give birth to sick kittens, etc. So that's the theory, and it works. What the theory does not give any information about is the psychological impact all that has on the volunteers. Now, I've participated in a few TNR missions over the years. I've learned from the best, actually, and I can tell you all there is to know about how to trap, what tools to use, what materials, about the technical problems you may have, about how to release, the benefits of it all. I've cheered with the rest of the volunteers the last time we did a massive release of dozens of spayed cats in Athens. It's amazing, and all that I know very well in theory. But for what has happened to me emotionally the last few months, <laughs> there is no theory that covers that, and I was not prepared for it at all. I didn't have the skills for it. I didn't have the knowledge. I still don't. I just make it up as I go along. See, in the city where I normally live, I am lucky enough to be surrounded by people like me who spay and neuter and feed. There is an excellent local charity in my area. I'm an active member of another one nearby, and in my neighborhood there are about two, three women like me that keep the situation under control. I'm protected, and so are the cats. But here, in this small village, I'm not protected at all. Neither are they. So, three kittens, apparently orphans, appeared last summer right outside my aunt's house where I stay. And I did what I thought anyone would or should, but no one did. I started feeding them, I dewormed them, I treated them for weeks while hearing comments from all around about how, oh, they're sick. Yeah, they're sick, so you take them to the vet, just like you take yourself to the doctor when you are sick. Jesus. Anyway. I left food for them when I went back to Athens, even water. I left their bowls on the street with instructions, my aunt. So I left them generally protected, healthy eventually, old enough to survive. And I promised to spay them as soon as they were old enough. Coming back the next month, September, all three were there and I'd never been happier. Coming back two months later and one of them was gone. It vanished during a rainstorm. I looked everywhere, I cried, a river. I still do sometimes when I remember him. And I just uh, decided to focus on the other two. And here we are two today. As promised, I spayed them, the female first. I treated her for her pneumonia, and now I'm treating her for an eye injury, but most likely that eye needs to be removed. I neutered the remaining male that for the last weeks has moved the block down. You see, there's already one adult male around here and there's no room for the two of them. But my baby still recognizes me and when I call him he runs for food or for a cuddle. The more you stay in a place and the more you keep putting food out, the more cats appear. Three days ago I neutered another young male. I keep them in the bathroom overnight and release them the next morning. The more I spay and the more I release, the more I can't stop thinking of spaying as many as I can. Suddenly I have a project in my head that includes 10-15 cats and no means to catch any of them. At least not with the equipment I have here. Last night I even dreamed about a similar situation where I was trapped in a vicious cycle of kittens and cats and spaying and deciding who might get adopted and who probably won't and protecting them from the dangers out there. It wasn't a dream, it was a nightmare. And it was a nightmare that came 48 hours later after I saw this. A dead young cat with its head smashed under the wheel of a parked car. The strays that you actually care for, the strays that you spay and neuter, are strays that you have invested in. They are in a way yours, but the sad reality is that they are also not. 
When you put all that effort into gaining their trust and capturing them and spending money on vet bills for spaying and for treatments, you are investing in their future. And the fact that this future you have invested in can be cut short by a speeding car or even worse, something very common in Greece of poisoned baits is one of the most heartbreaking things ever. You almost feel the need to be there with them on the streets 24-7 because they become like your kids and you just want to make sure they are protected. I know volunteers who haven't been on vacation for years because they can't turn their back on the commitment of feeding and monitoring their cat colonies or dog colonies for that matter, but this video is about cats. And it's important for me to make it about cats because for years I've been resisting to acknowledge the connection one may have with stray cats. <laughs> and now it's happened to me. Across my apartment in Athens lives a girl who cares for an entire colony. A few months back I found one of her cats dead on the street one night. She had been run over. The first thing I did was put the body aside to avoid having it run over again and again and to protect her cat friends from the same fate as they were all around the corpse in the middle of the street smelling the blood and trying to understand what was happening. I even washed the street to prevent any smells from luring them again to that spot. I left the body on the sidewalk in front of her apartment because I imagined she would want to bury it and I had someone call her and let her know about what had happened. The next day I met her. I told her I was sorry about her cat. She told me that she had raised her since she found her as a baby and that she had recently spayed her. Can you see now the investment I was talking about? The funny thing is that I knew back then what the loss of that cat meant to that girl. I knew it as an information, but I couldn't feel it. I do now. I see my well-fed recently spayed cats around and I feel relieved and happy knowing that I helped them live longer, healthier lives. When suddenly the idea of one of them having its life cut short, a life I have invested in, it hits me like a slap in the face. I almost want to put up signs in every corner of the street saying, please don't hurt my kids. The more of these cats I manage to spay and neuter, the more kids I'll have in this forgotten street of this small village and the more slaps in the face I'll be getting every time I imagine anything happening to them. Of course, I imagine them all living protected and in a home, like little Miss Grumpy who stuck around and eventually made her way into the house. But I know that's impossible. And that's the emotional impact TNR has on me. Now that I'm not participating in a campaign that involves random cats in random neighborhoods, but that I am actually doing it on my own for cats whose faces I know and whose voices I recognize and whose life stories I have become a part of. Hello, I am Valia. If you like the videos, please subscribe and if you can, join me on Patreon and help create more compassionate people. Para la versión del canal en castellano, busquen el enlace abajo.